the world ever said practice makes perfect? I, I, I questioned that. I was with my children today uh, and driving them to school. And as we're talking about different things, I brought up, hey, how any tests coming up? And they said, yeah, I've got this going on and that going on. I got one tomorrow. I'm like, okay, are you practicing for it? And they said, what do you mean? I said, no, when you practice, that's called like homework or you're studying. Studying is like practicing for a sport. And I'm writing down a bunch of things on my table here, just different ideas about all of the different things we do as humans, whatever we're into, and how we practice. You know, I, 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 the first one I stated is homework. So what's the point of homework? Well, homework prepares you for the exam. It gets you ready for when it's go time, game day, if you will, to test you that it's not foreign, that you are aware of those questions. I'm like, okay. And the obvious is, is like practicing your sport. Or if, um, I don't care what sport you're in, how are you practicing getting ready for the game? It's like working out. You know, I, I think when I see, I'm a big fan of flexing. Uh, I do different workouts and I show people different workouts, but uh, the, the workouts, I love to flex. And when I flex, I'm preparing the muscle for that stressor, if you will. And so it kind of like uh, somebody's really big into bodybuilding, let's say, or the physique shows. And what do they do? They have a, a mirror, and as they work out, they're flexing. They're preparing for the show. You can't just go out there and start flexing without preparing or knowing how to flex, and then what you look like and how you maximize your muscles for that event. It, it, it goes with anything in life. I had another one. How about somebody, people that cut hair? They don't go right into the word go and start cutting hair. They cut hair on mannequins. And so they've got the wig set up on the mannequins. And so their instructors are there showing them how to hold the scissors and the comb or the brush or whatever they're doing. But they're practicing for when they get into practice or a salon. Right? When they start doing hair on their own. I can go on and on. Uh, what's another one I wrote here? Chiropractors. The type of care that I offer, you don't want to go in cold. It's kind of like, you know, uh, imagine somebody coming out of the dugout. And when you come out of the dugout, you go grab your bat, walk right up to the base, the home plate, and you're ready to start go. No, 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 no. You're in the batter's box, are you not? Or the warm-up circle. And you're warming up and you're preparing, but you're visualizing. And as you're visualizing, you're looking at the pitcher and how the pitcher throws, and you're timing it. So you know you're timing, but you're prepared for that pitch and the speed of the pitch from that particular pitcher. That's being prepared for the event. That's why this is so important. And chiropractors like myself, I the type of work, I don't just come on in here you know, in the morning when I you know, see patients and I go on down and nobody's in the office yet. And whew, All right, I get in the zone. I kind of visualize what my day looks like as I prepare for people to come in. But I'm also in gratitude, but I put my hands on my table, and as I'm thrusting the type of care that I do, the table has a dropping mechanism. And so I'm preparing my body for the day's events of adjusting spines. I don't go in cold. I want to be prepared for that time when somebody needs the best from me. We should all do that. Regardless of whatever you're into, from work to play, whatever, how are you preparing? Another one on the sport, it just hit me. Uh, I'm in a racquetball league. I'm starting to play pickleball. I used to make fun of it. Now I'm playing this thing. I, I, I have a ball with it. Anyway, so uh, I'm in a racquetball league, and uh, they moved me up to the A league. Yeah, not so much. I'm like in the bottom of the barrel of this league. These guys are animals. However, one of the play players that's always there when I go back and forth from the gym, I don't have time to practice. So my practice is playing the game. Know what happens to those people? They get their butt kicked. Yeah, that's me. I get my butt kicked. And so I do pretty, it depends on who it is. I do okay. I hold my own. But I'm a C-rated player in this A-League. I am. And so when I watch in the B, in the B League, I, I do great. I, I, I'll win that league. Again, it's just different caliber of players. So I see this gentleman showing up with a five-gallon bucket full of racquetballs by himself. And he's a five-gallon bucket full and hitting backhands over and over and over to know exactly what that is. So now the body's memory, muscle memory, knows exactly when it's game time, it comes, it's easy. It just whoosh. Why is it easy? Because they were preparing for the game. And so I do that, like I said, when I'm adjusting in the spines. And they always say practice makes perfect. 
No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. I'm going to share with practice tests, but it doesn't make perfect. And so what's another? Oh, surgeons. I wrote all this down on the board here. Uh, surgeons with their cadavers. They don't go in cold and, and learning from a book about all the different body parts. Heck, I've dissected over 30 bodies myself. And when you do that, each one is different, but you practice your dissection so you can study the anatomy, the veins, the arteries, the nerves, muscles, all that stuff. And so you know everything that's going on. So when it's time for surgery, it's not foreign for you because you remember the cadavers and what this, this artery was here or that vein was there or that muscle is there. See what I'm saying? We need to do that with all, everything that we do. Heck, getting a, just hit me, getting a driver's license. You don't get in the car as soon as you're 16 and start driving. You get a permit that allows you to practice. And you do that with somebody who's experienced in the car. And you learn the rules of the road. So when it's time for you to go on your own, you're prepared. It's with everything. But it doesn't make it perfect because you're never a perfect driver. You're never a perfect athlete. You're never a perfect doctor. You're not perfect ever. There's only one perfection, by the way. And so, again, when I see, oh, CPR class. This just hit me. I'm writing a bunch of these down. So CPR class, think of this. When you're doing you know, a CPR class, you're practicing on this dummy, right? And so you know exactly. So when it does happen, it's not foreign. It's like, oh, I remember that from the class. We do this, put my hands here. This is the thrust. This is what I do. You know exactly what's going on. Gun rage. You know, think of you know, anybody who's like police officers, let's say. They practice and practice. People who are sharpshooters. People who go hunting. Right? What do you do? You pra how do you practice? You go to target ranges and you have your gun and you know exactly what that gun feels like at a certain distance. And when you have like police officers or SWAT or the military, they practice. They're just not going out cold. Here's your gun. All right, go, go to war. No. You practice. Again, you're never perfect, but you practice because practice gets you prepared. And then I really started to think of um, like even lawyers. Lawyers have, you know, when they go to school, they do mock trials. And they do mock trials to practice law. When they're practicing law, when they go to court, they don't look like fools and they're prepared for the case. It's always interesting to me when it's like, you know, when you hear of a doctor or a lawyer, somebody on a professional level, you just, oh, how long you've been in practice? I'm not practicing. Like, I, I, I know what I'm doing. Me, after 25 years, I kind of know what I'm doing, but am I still practicing? Which means, am I still studying? Am I still learning? Is, am I still getting ongoing education? All day long. Absolutely. Like daily. There's always something new that I learn about the body or certain things that I could do to be a better doctor. And it's just like you. I don't care what you're into. What are you practicing right now so you're a better it, whatever that is? And so think about somebody even as a, a barista. And somebody making, you know, doing the coffees and they, you know, they prepare their coffee and how they set everything up. That takes practice. You don't go in cold with it. Everything's practice. But at the end, then I think, all right, now you're done. Let's say you graduated or, you, or you've done that certification class or whatever that is. And so now you go, um, now what? What do I do? How do I get experience? I, I think of it, my, I used to work at UPS way back in the day. And when I worked at UPS, you never go in cold with the packages. So if you're a loader, if you're an unloader, if you're a sorter, if you're, you know, you're working the truck, the local delivery trucks, or you're doing semis, you never go in cold. And so what I mean by cold is, is here's the keys, or here's the truck, or here are the boxes. Go for it. Have a good time, Eddie. Uh, no, it didn't work that way. And I remember I had somebody in the truck with me. So as the boxes come, this is how we set them up. This is It's like Tetris. It's crazy. And so when you set this all up, this is what we're to expect. This is where the labels go. This is the type of truck. This is this. This is that. And so when that happens, then what? Are you ready? And if you're not ready, then you have somebody like a mentor. So let's go back to like the UPS. Or how many times have you seen any delivery service when you see two people in the truck? One's experienced and the other one is learning. That's what a mentor does. A mentor will say, hey, I've prepared... Uh, through the years of what I do, and now as I've learned through my experiences of my oops and my successes, I want to share those to make sure that you do not duplicate mine. That's a mentor. Mentors will try to keep you from failing because they don't want you to experience what they did. That's what a mentor does. 
And so regardless of whatever you're into, do you have a mentor? I did. And so I have other people in my circle, if you will, that keep me sharp, that keep me, that I've given them full disclosure to say, um, Eddie, you're doing this, or Eddie, don't do that, or did you know you, when you said this, did you, I keep people in my circle to keep me from slipping, if you will. That's what, a you know, you have a group of mentors or people that keep you sharp that care about you. But then you have the other side of like coaching. Coaching is somebody that will, what do you want? Cool, I will help coach you through that and kind of give you some sort of, what have you ever thought about? And what about this? Oh yeah, it's a good idea. Or about that? Maybe I can connect you with so-and-so. Or the, That's what a coach does. A coach will allow you to make your decisions and in the process fail, but then work through that with you. A mentor will not. A mentor is somebody that says, hey, let me take you under my wing and let's rock. You know, there's coaches all over the place and they help you work through your yuck. But again, at the end, are you ever done coaching? Are you ever done working through that? And if you're not, why? What are you holding on to? Or the best part of it is, is we live in this world of compare. So regardless of whatever you're into, how are you comparing yourself to others? And it, here's the thing. No species does that, but humans. So you've got to start comparing yourself to yourself. And so I look and in, in, in reflect on myself of when I graduated school and I opened up practice. And when I opened up practice, I did not have a mentor or coaching program because in my profession, the chiropractic world, they're all over the place right now. But way back in the day, there were very few. And so I just had a desire to serve. And I figured it out on the way. And as I figured it out on the way, 12 practices later, here I am. And I think of the different things that I have done and things that I've learned and things that I've like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that happened to me. Yeah, but you're a doctor. You don't make mistakes. Really? Like, really? I'm as human as anybody else. You ever see any truck driver make a mistake that's been driving for 20, 30, 40 years? Sure, they make mistakes. We're human. And I think at the end of the end, it's about being prepared. What are you preparing for? You know, I think of somebody like financial advisors that I know. They teach you some steps that you can do financially so when you save, you're prepared for your future, i.e. retirement. And so when you're doing that, cool, you're looking forward to something. You're being prepared. You know, people are like, oh, I need to lose weight. For what? So I'm healthy. Define health. Oh, I want to be in better shape. Define better shape. Are you defining things in your life? That's the preparedness. How many times? I've switched my major three times. I, initially, I was going to school for graphic design. Then I, in Chicago. And then I moved down to Florida to be a cop. I had the in with the DEA. I was going to do the whole DEA thing. And I was in. I was like, man, I'm going to go do this watching cops on TV growing up, who knows? I was like, I can so do this. And it was just my gig. And then I did a, I'm gonna say a U-turn, but I went through a completely different path and I went, all right, I met this gentleman and I, be, I became a chiropractor. So graphic design, cop, chiropractor. See how that works? I was preparing for all the different things. I didn't know what God had planned, but are you leaning on like your gut? Like, it just feels right. And I was talking to a dad the other day. My son plays a ton of golf. And I was talking to a dad, and, and he was like, I don't know if this is for my kid. He absolutely loves basketball. I'm like, okay, so I can help you here real quick. Ready? How often is he practicing golf, and how often is he practicing basketball? And he looks at me and had this aha moment. Because that's when you know. When your heart's in it and you're practicing and you're practicing, and you get it. You know, kids that pretty much get good grades, they practice with homework and study. Yeah, I didn't do homework and study, and my grades were awful growing up. True story. I struggled terribly through school because I didn't. it, it wasn't a thing for me until I fell in love with what I'd like, which was, you know, I did okay in undergrad. High school was atrocious. I did okay in undergrad, and then I, you know, got into chiropractic and I started studying science and more science and more science. And I'm like, I'm liking this. And I start studying on my own for the first time in my life because I fell in love with something that it could love me back in a way. And it, and it still is today. And so again, talking to that dad and I said, so how often is your son practicing? He said, he's always out practicing shooting baskets. 
Huh. How often does he practice his golf? How often is he at the range? How often is he you know, watching YouTube videos on courses? How often is he reading books on golf? How often, how I went through the, and none. Didn't say anything. And he's looking at me, he goes, I got my answer. I said, you so have your answer. Is your son playing golf because you want him to play golf? Yeah. How often does that happen? All the time. Happens young, old, male, female, doesn't matter. Happens all of the time. We end up living our lives through our children. And you're not allowing them to practice their thing that is just innately in them, something they love. And so they're prepared for the game of this thing called life. Mm -hmm. So I, I, as I reflect over and over and over, we have to take a deep breath. And am I practicing? I have a friend of mine that's a really good painter. I mean, this guy's fast, and he's just, you know, you don't want to be sloppy fast because there's some yuck paint. Paint will ruin the entire house, right, outside of not being able to do drywall. But when I see that, and some of you who paints and is really well, I used to build homes when I was a doc, so I'm a little particular. And as I paint, you know, I'm pretty particular, and I'm a little bit slower and methodical, and I have a friend that's lightning fast with a four-inch brush. He's going, he can fly with it. I'm like, wow. How do you do that? He's like, what do you mean? I've just been painting for this long. I just get it. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. You've been painting this long as this experience that you have called practice. And you're prepared for any game. So when somebody says, hey, can you help do my house with this? You're like, yeah. I don't have to look at it. Sure, I can do it. Why? Because you're prepared. It's no different than like, oh, somebody, you, know, you do hair? Oh, could you give me a haircut? Yeah, I, I'm ready to do that. Well, okay. That's what it's about. So we need to stop real quick, and I want you to really digest this, that you're never, ever, ever going to be perfect. And I know we've heard this before, you know, I, I'm going to do this so I can do this perfect. You know, the Olympics, oh, they got a perfect 10. No, it was with how somebody saw that and gave you that score and you said, we call it a perfect 10 because you didn't do anything wrong. Sure, you didn't do anything wrong, but during your gymnastics career, the years and years and years of practice are preparing you for that day. So maybe on that one day, everything goes your way and you're so in the zone that you can get that 10 on that day. But does it happen all the time? No. That's because we're not perfect. And when we lean into understanding that we're not, and that could be the decisions that we make, that can be the relationships that we have with people, it could be with the diet that we have, the anything that we do, to know that it's not perfect, it might be perfect right now for us as we grow. And as we grow, our body is only responding to what we give it, and our mind is only responding to what we give it. Yes, our mind, we have two minds, one we think with and one that keeps us alive. There's two different brains in there, subconscious, conscious, if you will. And so with those things that are happening, one is striving to be perfect, and the other one says, I come from perfection. Do you get it? And so the only thing perfect is our creator. And so when we can let go of that and lean on God a little bit and says, I'm doing the best I can with what I have and I'm going to practice, I'm going to practice, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. You know, how many times you see athletes or people like, you know, I want to give credit to God. Thank you, God. Because God's giving you the ability to do what you love. But are you, and this is where it really comes down to right now, do you wake up every day excited? Do you wake up every day on purpose? Do you sit in the car or, or talk to somebody or at the end of the day, you just go, man, I can't wait to do that again tomorrow. Or do you have this practicing life that you're just grinding it out, punching in, punching out, or maybe you own your own business. You're like, why am I doing this right now? Well, you have to make a shift. I, I, I'm speaking to myself. I'm making a few shifts right now in my business world because that's part of growth. And I'm making some shifts right now that are going to be transitional in my life forever. And then they'll transition to something else, as we are humans, because the only thing permanent in life is change. But when we can focus on the thing that we love, like a hobby almost. Imagine working, whatever you do, and it's a hobby to you. Like, I don't care if it's from construction, like you're flipping home. I don't care what it is. I don't care what it is. But it's a hobby. And you get to do it every day. And when you get to do it, it becomes fun. When it becomes fun, you get to practice at it. Because practice should be fun. Yes, it's hard work, but it should bring enjoyment to you. It should. And so when it, it, it this was a conversation, again, I had with my son, because yesterday he was hitting golf balls for about four hours. And I said, how are you doing? He goes, I'm not done yet. 
And I said, okay, I said, let's do another half hour. Another half hour, I wanted to do X, Y, and Z. I'm like, wow, like he's into this. It's four hours, four and a half hours, and just one day of hitting golf balls over and over, preparing for the game because it brings enjoyment to him. I do the chiropractic that I do because it brings enjoyment to me. I love speaking. I'm getting on stage. It brings enjoyment. to See, what's the thing that just, my daughter dances like crazy. She, she loves it. Why? Because it brings enjoyment to her. She loves doing it. Once again, if you're sitting maybe in a cubicle, or you're at a library, or you're at a coffee shop, or you're in traffic, or you're about to go to bed, or you're waking up through a morning ritual, think on this right now. Are you doing this because you get to do it and you love to do it? Or are you doing it because you feel like you have to do it because you feel stuck? You feel stuck. Mm -mm. I, I remember I, I might have brought this up before uh, a few podcasts ago, but I'll bring it up again. There's this gentleman named Ivan Ivanovich, and he is in way back, I'm talking, I think it was the, oh gosh, don't quote me, late 1700s, early 1800s, I believe. I have to look it up, and and oh, I can't remember. But he's talking. He's a philosopher, and he's a Russian philosopher. He's talking to his wife, and he's talking to his wife, and his you know on his deathbed, she's holding his hand and says, "Hey, I, I could have sworn I've said this before, but are you afraid of dying? Like at the end of the end, because we're all going to die, I promise you. But at the end of the end, are you afraid of dying?" And he looks up at her as he's holding his wife's hand and says, No, I'm not afraid of dying. What I'm afraid of is, did I live a half-lived life? Did I go all out? Did I do what I love? Did I leave a legacy in my own unique way? Did I do that? Did I add to somebody's life? Did I serve the way God intended for me to serve here on earth while I was here for that short dash window of time. Did I do that? And if not, why not? Why not? I remember there was a gentleman who came to my office and way back, and his name is Larry, and Larry's in his early 50s, and he drove a tractor trailer his entire life. He's you know, an ex-drug dealer, he found God, a bunch of, he's been shot up, heroin dealer, I mean craziness, long crazy story. But I fell in love with Larry. Larry, he and I became super, super tight buddies. And at 51 years old, Larry, with a GED, decided to go to chiropractic school. And he had 10 years of school, but he felt his purpose. He's like, this makes so much sense to me. This is where God's calling me. I got to do this. So the point is, is I don't care how old, how old you are, how long you've been doing something, how ingrained this thing is into you, you can always live a new life by making this one thing called a choice. And with that choice, you make change. And with that change, you grow. And what do you want to grow into? That's the point of practicing what you love. You know, they say practice what you preach. What are you preaching to people? Is it something that you love? Is it just in you? Let's say you're a chef. Do you tell everybody you're a chef? Or are you just prepared and you practice and practice and make the best food according to what you think you should be doing? So people have a different experience by your product. We all make something. We're all creators in our own unique way. I don't care if you're employed or, or, or you're, you're self-employed or you're employed by somebody else. It doesn't matter. We all create a product. And what kind of product are you creating? Gosh, I want you to think on that. So practice what you do. Practice what you preach. And live what you preach. And when you do that, you start to not live a half-lived life. And you live a life with intention and purpose. So at the end of the end, you go, God, I did my best. And God looks at you with a little high five and says, I'm proud of you, dude. I'm proud of you, Eddie. You did good. That's all I want. I want to know that I did my thing. I never thought I'd be doing podcasts. I do speaking and that kind of stuff. But here I am doing a podcast. I didn't, it's just something that evolved and something that I kind of grew and I practice on camera. Sure. So I'm prepared for this conversation. Mm-hmm. How many times have I videoed myself and go, oh my gosh, I can't believe I said that. I can't believe I, I stood this way or my mannerisms and does, um, you know, well, kind of, well, you know, you eliminate all those. So you practice. So you don't have any of those. But what are you practicing? I'm going to say it again. If you're in the car, you're driving home, 
or you're at the gym, you're doing your thing. I don't care what it is. What are you practicing right now and what do you want to be known for? Because that's what you need to be practicing. So therefore, you're ready and you're prepared. More than just ready, you're prepared for game time. Prepare for game time. I love it. It's part of getting weller. Think good things. Keep your head on straight. Be the best version of you. Have a great day.